I'm just going to show you how you can export a quick version of your project. We will look more deeply into exporting a little bit later in the course, but for right now, I'm going to have you export a version of your rough cut so that you can share it with your peers and other people within the class in order to get some feedback. Once you have your project set up in the timeline, there are a couple things that you need to be aware of before exporting. One of the things that you want to make sure is that none of your audio tracks are muted or soloed. If your tracks are muted, that means that they will not export as part of the project. If your tracks are soloed, that just means that that's the only audio track that's going to play. Now, currently my project only has one audio track, so soloing doesn't do much for me. But if I did have multiple audio tracks and one of them was soloed, that would be the only audio track that would play. This is helpful when you're building your project because sometimes you might want to turn off all of your other audio tracks so that they don't interfere with an edit that you might be concentrating or focusing on. Needless to say, make sure that none of the tracks are muted or soloed unless you don't want to export them. The other thing to be aware of is that none of your video tracks can be toggled off. If the video tracks are toggled off, this means that those tracks will not be part of the final export. So it's a good idea just to ensure that none of those things are muted, soloed, or turned off in case you want to make them part of your project. I did want to point out that my project does not have any in and out points. If you do have in and out points, you may just want to clear them. So I'm just going to randomly make an in and out point. If I did have in and out points and I was ready to export, I probably want to get rid of them. You can go ahead and right click on one of the in and out points and choose to clear them, or you can use the keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut to clear in and out points on the Mac is option X. On the PC, it is control shift X. Now that you have verified that everything is good to go, we're going to go ahead and export our clip. You can export by clicking the export tab, which is going to take you into the export dialog box. You can also access this at any time by clicking command or control M. Now you can make some choices about how you want your project to be exported. As I mentioned, we're going to dive more deeply into the ins and outs of the export dialog box a little later on in the course. So for right now, I'm just going to share with you the things that you need to know for this particular deliverable. The first thing is you're going to want to verify the file name is what you want it to be. So I might want to change mine to just say whale shark rough cut. You'll also be able to specify the location of where you want the file saved. I'm going to place my file in a different location. So I'll click on this and then I can navigate to where I want the file saved. Once I've drilled into the appropriate folder, I'm just going to simply click save to ensure that the file is saved in that location. In regards to the preset, you have a bunch of different options here. For your rough cut, I'm just going to have you use the high quality 1080p HD. So we'll go ahead and choose that. Over here on the right, it's going to give you a preview of what your project is going to look like. You can play, rewind, and advance if you need to. You can also choose to export a specific range. So I want the entire project exported. But you can see that we could use our in and out points if there were in and out points in the project, as well as defining a custom point. But we're just going to use entire source. This part of the pane is going to give you a rundown of how your video is going to be output. So you can see I'm using H.264 for the encoder. I'm going to be using 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p, 30 frames per second, etc. If we move back over here to the left pane, we can dial in all sorts of specifics for the different categories. But once again, I'm just going to skip over most of these for right now. I am going to go down to the effects category. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using the name overlay. This will place a name on top of the video clip. And because this is a rough cut, we're going to identify this with a specific name. So I'm going to go ahead and just change this to whale shark rough cut because the name is generated by the name of the sequence 
And then instead of format being source file name, I'm going to choose prefix and suffix only. The other option that I want to use is a timecode overlay. And this will just place a timecode on your file. You can go ahead and position this in any location. So if I wanted this to be in the bottom left, I could place it in the bottom left. We'll be using the timecode for this part of our project because you are going to be sharing this file with other people and I want them to be able to easily identify in your project where they need to make a comment. So we'll go ahead and we'll leave the name overlay just to clearly identify that this is a rough cut as well as adding the timecode overlay. As somebody watches your video and they get to a specific point, they could easily make a notation of exactly where that portion of the video is and then they can give you feedback that will make sense. Those are going to be the only options that we're going to be changing for this particular rough cut. So once you've made those settings, you'll simply click export. Now if you click export, you will not be able to continue to work in Premiere as Premiere is going to be busy exporting your file. If you wanted to continue to work in Premiere, you would click Send to Media Encoder. The Media Encoder is a separate application and it will actually run on its own and export your file, allowing you to continue to work in Premiere. I'll go ahead and I'll simply click Export. Premiere is going to go ahead and render the file for me. Depending on how long your project is, this could take a few minutes. So if you do choose to export in Premiere, you might have to wait until it's done. Obviously, if you want to be able to continue to work in Premiere, exporting to the media encoder is going to be a better option. I'll go ahead and let this export and then I'll share with you what my final file looks like. Now that Premiere has finished exporting my file, here is my final rough cut. I'll go ahead and double click on that and I'll just show you a snippet of what it looks like. Here's my final file and if I play it, Everything should play, the audio, the video, you'll see the timecode stamp, as well as the name overlay. And these items will persist during the entire playback. One of my favorite names for whale sharks is Mariketana. This is what they call whale sharks in Madagascar. Okay, so you get the idea. Needless to say, this is what you're going to be submitting in this week's assignment. In addition to the exported file, you're going to also save your Premiere file. And I showed you earlier how you could collect and package all of the assets. For this week's assignment, I just want you to give me the native Premiere file as well as your exported project. When you submit your final project, you'll be submitting everything to me, including all of the linked assets that you're using in your project. I just want to check on your Premiere file, even though all of your media is going to be offline, I can get an idea of how you're working. I'll also be able to see what your rough cut looks like by viewing your exported MP4 file.